Jordan, we're back. <laughs> John, great to see you again. Hey, good to see you. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year. So we are up to our morning ride in uh, Amsterdam on November right. 1st. This is the next video in the series. And uh, so, yeah, we we, we are going to dive into uh, this little video that we shot uh, on November 1st in the morning um, and it'll take us right up to lunchtime and we'll get to our lunch spot and then uh, and then later that afternoon we ended up meeting up with uh, Jason Slaughter with Not Just Bikes and then he took us for a ride so the next video in this series will actually be us riding with him and then Great. later in the afternoon uh, we went over to uh, Work Cycles and met up with Henry, C Henry Cutler we also met up with our, our good friends Dave Edwards and Ariana Reed, and uh, then rode around with them and had dinner with them. That'll be video number three. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have three video cuts uh, from from this particular day. But uh, uh, real quick before we hit the record button and, and the play button, um, quick, quick thoughts. I mean, just from that little sizzle reel there of uh, the memories that kind of rush back. Uh, what was that like on that uh, that first morning there on November first uh, in Amsterdam? I feel like we got a, a little taste there of the spectrum of experiences of uh, being, a, you know, a pedestrian or on bike in Amsterdam. There is the sort of chaotic and there's the really, you know, calm and subdued. And we really got a taste for all of that. So, yeah, uh, a lot of that will be in the park. And uh, and uh, but, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get there. Right. Yeah, we're going to talk about that when we get there. And in fact, uh, you and I were, were just reflecting on the fact uh, before we hit the record button that as it turned out, we ended up hitting a lot of parks because that was one of the things that Jason really wanted to reinforce with us is that there's great connectivity through the parks. And so we'll be sure to do that. But before we do any of that, we actually uh, met up with somebody very, very special in the morning, very first thing, and that was Maude DeVries over at the Bikes Program, uh, which is part of the Bicycle Mare, and that's what uh, is right up next. So let's go right into that. And if you're not familiar with the bikes program, uh, I did have a wonderful interview with Maud uh, on the podcast. Uh, reflections, you know, from that morning meeting, uh, from from your perspective, I don't know how much you knew about the bicycle mare program. Did, was was that something you were super familiar with? I was vaguely familiar with it before, but I feel like I learned a lot um, that morning. It's it's pretty inspiring and awesome, and like. I love how it's a, you know, it's a global program, but really relies on grassroots efforts in the cities where they have, you know, the bicycle mayor program operating. Yeah. Yeah. And Maude was super, super uh, hospitable. Uh, she welcomed us into the office and uh, pumped us full of coffee and then sent us on our yeah. way and, <laughs> and, and all that. And Their was, office was, location was pretty, pretty great too. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's dive right into this. Let's hit the play button again. Yeah, you miss a, a few minutes of our and setup. And we're here in Bondle Park yeah, once again. It is an absolutely beautiful but windy day. So it'll probably be hard to pick up much good sound today, but uh, we'll give it a shot. I thought it was funny that as soon as I was like saying that we may not be able to pick up much good audio and then it was fine and the birds were just chirping as loud as possible. And uh, so this was your first visit to Vondel Park, right? Um, what, what did you think when we, you know, sort of, you know, cut over to the park and like you said, we had a little bit of setup that we needed to do and getting the cameras all set up, but we started rolling. What were your first impressions? One of the things that I love most about uh, Vondel Park is uh, this incredibly wide paved section, but also that you have unpaved area here, which is wonderful for runners. Runners prefer not to be on pavement, so they like that. So this is one of the entrances at the far end of the park. So this is one of the terminuses.
and then up around the corner we'll see another entrance that was sort of a pedestrian only entrance and then up here you'll be able to see an area where you can cycle right in the main gates to the park all right i think we've got it we're, we're safe to be able to do that some of your initial reflections there i think it was a little bit wild to me the the place that we actually entered from mm -hmm. and how you know it was a really bustling busy street there and right around the corner just kind of through us through an alleyway you're all, all of a sudden in this park and it's so seamlessly woven in um that was that was pretty awesome and i think it was like down some steps but there was a there was accommodations for being able to roll your bike up with you as you walked to the steps that was that was a nice touch um this was so calming i mean like i said before some parts of amsterdam on a bike can feel pretty hectic and chaotic and maybe even stressful and uh you know, you could see why people might try to take part of their commute through here, as we, as we definitely noticed. Yeah. Um, but yeah. just super comfortable and wide and. All right, Jordan. Lots of, first impressions. Yeah. Fondle Park. See what he has. It's great. I have no <laughs> notes. Just keep doing what you're doing. Ten out of ten. Positive vibes. Positive vibes. Yeah, I, I think we've got a satisfied customer there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was mentioning to, to Jordan that uh, on the weekends, especially in the summertime here, uh, the park is just jam-packed with families. Uh, but again, you know, on a weekday, this is a major uh, commuter route for people trying to get to school, get to work, get to their meaningful destinations. And so it's just a steady stream of humanity going in both directions. Yeah, it, it, you really notice that so much, especially, you know, I, I guess this was getting closer to, so this is late morning because we're, we're eventually making our way over to our lunch location. That's the destination, by the way, folks, it, for this particular uh, video. I think I mentioned that in the beginning. So, yeah, I mean, this is like a mid-morning, mid to late morning, and you can just see, you know, folks just kind of riding along, going about their day. Oh yeah, it didn't feel empty or dead at all. Like, except for the very first spot we were, we were like, you know, in a crowd the whole time, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's quite extraordinary, and it, it really is in the summertime. It's so amazing to see the great lawn areas completely packed, and here's a mobility, uh, you know, a, adaptive cycle strike there. Um, that was so cool to see so many people being able to take advantage of these all ages and abilities environments. Yeah, we got zipped past on an e-bike up up in front of us a second before. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's true. So the one of the things that I definitely wanted to talk with you about, because this is part of your everyday life, this is your work life, is trying to, you know, reimagine putting together uh, trails and pathways and ensuring that they don't just get sort of minimized as being yeah. recreation only. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I, that's, I think that's a really important point. Um, the beauty of, you know, an effective bike path or trail is that it can have multiple utilities. It can be this, you know, this escape, you know, into a, an opportunity to be active and, and out in nature, such as it exists in our cities. And it can also be this like vital um, way of getting, you know, getting to work or getting to the store, you know, can be a actually calming way to carry out, you know, chores or errands or whatever. And um, we've probably talked about this before, but there's this tendency to see bike riding as as a leisure activity, as recreation. And so we almost talk about it like, oh, well, this, party, this part of town needs a trail in the same way that this part of town needs a, a grocery store or a, a park or whatever. And, you know, however you get to it, 
Uh, you, you know, you might drive to get there, right? But you, you have access to one. And、um, I think、uh, you were referring to you know, some of my work having to do with, to do with、um, trails and cities. And、um, you know, that's, that's one of the big things that we're dealing with now is okay, you can have 20 miles of trail, but if it's only useful if you're already on the trail. Getting somewhere, then you just, you're just limiting what that trail can mean. And so, if you, if you miss all these close, you know, these close connections that are possible,、um, yeah, like I guess you're just kind of making it a single use thing, which even having a single use is great, but like when there's opportunities to double up the use, like we're seeing here,、um, it's kind of a no brainer. So,、um, in Dallas, for example, we have these like really near connections to, to some. Rapid transit stops、um, and schools and hospitals and grocery stores. And just making that last step of doing the 300 foot connection、um, so that you're not crossing a really busy street just kind of on your own.、Um, that, that is the stuff that's maybe a little bit less sexy、um, to, to、um, you know, when cities think about adding a trail. But that's the, like, the real differentiator in making it. Serve multiple functions. What do you think? Yeah. 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 And, and I like what you, you said there in, in terms of you know, ensuring that you have multiple points、so、of access. So, here, let's see、like、what this guy wants to say here. City. You know, you've got your trees, your greenery around here. And even on a cold, blustery、uh, fall day, first of November,、uh, you see a ton of folks、uh, here in the park. Um, mainly, you know, using it as a way to get、uh, from one side of the city to the other. But it is a refreshing way to make your commute. Jordan's refreshed. Yeah, I'm refreshed. Jordan's refreshed. And we're actually coming up to、uh, the, the terminus、uh, on the other side of the park. So we, we had seen、uh, just moments ago, we're going to come up to the other main gates here、uh, at this point. We're actually going to flip a U turn and then head back down. And,、uh, and so, yeah, connectivity, these main entrance points. I've filmed this location back in 2018 and 2019 with just hundreds of people cycling through here. And the, the thing I wanted to mention is just take a look at the scale. It's kind of like having, you know, a home right on Central Park、yeah. in New York and Manhattan. It looks like they might cost as much. Oh, yeah. For sure. We we're actually reflecting we on the beautiful housing right there along that side. And, and、uh, we'll, we'll actually, we went, went out of our way to make sure that when we left the trail, the pathway, the park, we went through some of those houses. And that's the reason why we exited the way we did.、Uh, but I did want to note this tram that we're going, you know, we're going to go under this main road. We have this, the tram just went past. And so you really get a, a sense as to, Oh, yeah, this is like all on the same grade level. You know, we're able to just roll right on through. We're not having to cross any major roads、uh, on this. And then earlier, I was just mentioning just how the scope and scale of this, how wide this is, because this is truly a shared space. This is shared with、mm -hmm. pedestrians. There is that unpaved section that, if it's not too muddy, many runners will prefer to be there, which is my comment from earlier.、Uh, but it's, it is shared space. So there isn't that kind of weirdness that takes place on so many North American、uh, quote unquote recreational trails where, oh, it's,、yeah. it can't be mixed use and, oh, what'll happen? Well, we'll take a look. I mean, you just, you don't ride at 25 miles per hour. It's a relaxed pace. Everybody's getting along just fine. And it's super, super wide. And it's super wide. Yeah, which makes the whole, the whole issue of mixing, use, you know, mixing speeds a lot less of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. And、uh, folks, you may have noticed we just rolled past a, a restaurant there.、Uh, we sort of went on a quest of looking out and searching、uh, you know,、uh, beer gardens and restaurants and cafes. It was an early 
brisk morning and so yeah it, it, or mid morning it, mm -hmm. but yeah the beer gardens weren't open i did go back several days later and uh and track down uh one of the cafes that i like to to, to frequent and i did have a mid-afternoon beer um but it, it's what was your thoughts of of that whole thing because it's yeah. It's kind of a cool environment. You have your two main routes. It's like a big, yeah. huge loop, but there's a whole bunch of intermingled cut through routes as well and hooking up to great lawns and fountains and, and other restaurants. Yeah, I think that's part of what makes a big park like this really work is how many different kind of rooms there are within it and, you know, opportunities to, uh, you know, get lost a little bit or at least you know create a little mystery about what's around the next corner and makes you want to keep going and exploring yeah yeah in fact that's the the cafe that i went back to a few days later uh, a week later or so um, in fact i think it might have been the day that you left I, I i did go to amsterdam that day to have my squeaky bike fixed that day <laughs> so <laughs> i think i did have uh, lunch over or not lunch but uh, a, a snack and a beer there so it was good consoled yourself uh for for one loss with a beer and as you can tell yeah. there's quite a few alternate routes this is what we we're talking about through the park nice fountain over there I think this is where the we got a little amphitheater and some beer gardens yeah it was just it's so cool uh it, i was telling you during this ride that one of the neat things that existed back in 2018 or maybe even 2019 uh, was this big, huge adult playground. It was like a massive structure and fort. And it was, it looked like it was some of the same uh, structures that we saw in that one park over in Harlem, uh, over by the expo when we did the uh, the cargo bike festival. And, and uh, it was, had since been removed. It wasn't in the park anymore, but I remember how much fun that was, uh, you know, checking that out. and hanging out and doing things we see a person you know in a wheelchair uh being pushed along there getting some fresh air and um uh, i just did a, a recording with uh ole kesau uh with cycling without age and talking about how important it is for the elderly uh and and other individuals that don't have mobility to be able to get out and get some fresh air get some wind in their hair uh so it was that's the other wonderful thing that an environment like this provides is that opportunity for them to get some fresh air. Very, very important. Yep. Yep. So when you look at, you know, this and you kind of, we, we have this rolling or we're getting the, this flush of memories coming back. What, what, what does this do for you in terms of inspiration and, or, reframing that discussion for those trails that you're working on and, and trying to help communicate that it doesn't have to be unidirectional or dimensional when, when it comes yeah. to, uh, you know, what that trail is for. Well, there's a lot of thoughts that come to mind, but one of them is just how, you know, we're often so unwilling to give more than a few feet to, uh, to a trail like this, you know, maybe 12 feet. 14 if it's if if things are really outstanding and um even in a city as dense and like intense as as amsterdam like obviously this is a you know an exception to most of the bike infrastructure there but like there's no reason we have to be so restrictive um with, with the amount of space given how liberal we are with the, um you know car space yeah um, yeah. And so many of our, at least I'll just speak for Dallas, so many of the roads, every mile is a six lane divided arterial. And that is such a great opportunity for re, you know, rethinking, you know, and um, bumping the lanes down and just creating space for this kind of opportunity at a, you know, at a smaller scale, but more interwoven. So that's what comes to mind watching this yeah. for me. Yeah, I, I, I press pause here just for a second because I know I'm going to pop in here uh, in the video um, and and comment a little bit uh, about this uh, person's bike. So let's hit play again. Because it was kind of funny. 
That's right. <laughs> I forgot about this. Check out the top, the wheel. Oh. <laughs> It's kind of an unfair joke. I mean, it, uh, part of <laughs> part of what it is is, you know, the the Dutch are these are just tools. These are just everyday things, and they and yeah. they use them. They don't like cherish them typically, you know, the way many North Americans cherish their bikes and pamper them and everything. Yeah, they're just tools, and yeah, sometimes they get their, they, you know, they're they're not in the best of condition. I made fun of you know them and saying that my bike was squeaking. It was definitely a Dutch bike now, uh, but. Yeah, I just had to laugh when I saw how wobbly that that uh, uh, unfortunate back wheel was. <laughs> I'm sure she'll it's get character. it fixed. Yeah, it is. Uh, but I am sure she'll get that fixed before too long. We're, we're actually going to be uh, jumping off of the uh the the trail here in the park in just a moment uh but before we do that uh, just you know final parting thoughts of what this experience was like uh for you uh to be in bondal park for the very first time uh cathartic and um yeah just a joy to be in a relaxed setting surrounded by trees um in a, in a city that's you know pretty intense so yeah yeah, well, a welcome reprieve. Yeah, yeah. So we're about ready to turn right here, and uh, we're going to take one of the side exits so that we can get a sense as to what the the residential, the, the houses right along that area were like. Uh, and you're navigating. I've, I've turned the navigation over to you at this point, and so you're, you're helping figure this out. Go ahead and, and as this rolls, just kind of reflect on the housing as well as what you were suddenly thrust into that uh, you were navigating uh, through in terms of the streets. My immediate thoughts about the housing is, uh, wow, I was born to the wrong family because I would sure love to live <laughs> live in a place like this. I should have inherited more. Uh, <laughs> right on the park, more, uh, yeah. Real yeah. Yeah. No, it's just obviously so charming and um, and uh, you know, densely packed in, but also pretty comfortable. Um, we have associations with density over here, and it would be hard to argue that this wasn't a pretty comfortable place to go for a walk. Yeah. One of the things that I, in watching this video uh, once again, is I was kind of shocked at how intense the number of cars were, both parked yeah, and, and in there. True, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, we didn't feel uncomfortable at all, but there was just so many of them. And so it did kind of reinforce a little bit of, and dispel one of the myths that um, there, you know, it, it, the, uh, clearly the, the rate of automobile ownership with those, you know, in that particular area and on those particular streets, those were quite wealthy individuals that was a very affluent neighborhood and yeah yep. they own cars and yeah they're they're parked out there on the street and uh, uh they were very courteous and you know it felt comfortable for us but yeah they were ever present so it does I kind think of that's part of the yeah i think that's a big part of the reason why we saw so many of them there right, right. i think maybe that group of people has a bit more influence to allow that that degree of parking right outside the park yeah. yeah, yeah. It also kind of reminds me too, uh, you know, since uh, later on this day, we actually connect with Jason Slaughter with Not Just Bikes, as I mentioned earlier, but he just recently, um, you know, had you know, produced a, a video about the reduction and the number of parking spots in Amsterdam. And so it made me think a little bit about that and saying, gee, I wonder how yep. successful the city is going to be over time of, of reducing those number of spots and you can see 30 kilometer per hour school zone here in very much an urban context there's a lot happening here big buses big tractors but you're still seeing some elevated pedestrian crossing areas that scofflaw up ahead just zoomed right through it oh cool a nice bucket. That's a different kind of cargo <laughs> bike. So, awesome. 
Yeah, no, that, that was a lot of fun. I wanted to make sure that we were able to highlight that little fun section there. But yeah, that is a great example. That was a school zone, very, very intense street. We got transit, we got street trams and all this stuff is going on. Yeah, there's a school there. Guess what? 30 kilometers per hour. Now we're, we're heading into an area here and I'll turn the volume back up of uh, a cultural area. So there's museums and all sorts of uh, really cool stuff happening. Oh, there's the Van Gogh Museum, Amsterdam. And you can see in the distance there is the Rijksmuseum, which is where we're gonna head towards so we can ride through the museum. Jordan didn't know that he was leading us to there, but since we're so close, we have to ride through the museum, even if it's not on our way. Yeah, I mean, if you're this close to the Rijksmuseum, you have to ride through it. So that had to be a fun, uh, you know, surprise for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you get into the same thing that you do in a writing in your car with Google Maps telling you where to go. And then you look up and you're, wow, here's where we actually are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, did you, do you know much of the, the story of, of this particular pass through? No, I think you talked a little bit about it when we were there, but I don't, I don't remember yeah. too many of the details. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those cherished and beloved aspects of it. I, I consider it a critical so cool. activity asset for the area yeah. uh, as a pass through. And uh, if it were up to the Rijksmuseum themselves, this wouldn't exist. And in fact, they've tried multiple times to shut this down. And uh, it's just a truly special thing to be able to ride your bike through here, uh, not only because of just the novelty of it, but it it's a critical connection i mean if this didn't exist the the way for people to be able to get to their meaningful destinations would be a very very major ride around uh some you know very uh, barriers you know so it, it really yeah. there's a, a critical utilitarian function to it um but at the end of the day it's it's still just super super cool <laughs> It is. John, do you think that the, you know, the speeding up of the e-bikes and um, I don't remember if the mopeds are allowed on these or not, but do you think that changes the calculus a little bit? Because I could see that being a little, maybe a little intimidating to walk across. Yeah, uh, I, I see what you're saying. That? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, to answer your question, yeah, um, certain parts of the uh, the Amsterdam environment, the, the scooters are not allowed on uh, the bike lanes. This is a, a, a pretty major stretch here, and I think they are uh, able to, to use that space. We actually do talk about this extensively with Jason Slaughter uh, oh, later yeah. on in the afternoon. You probably didn't hear a lot of that conversation, so when you see that video, uh, you're going to be like, you'll 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 be you kind of get a little bit more context because we talk about he talks about how. Uh, outside of the ring, uh, the the scooters are very much allowed in the, the cycle paths, but inside the, the critical ring, uh, they're not allowed. This particular street was rather interesting because, as you notice, we were there was no real separation. It was kind of like not much more than just a paint protection from pretty major, uh, you know motorway there but it didn't take long and then you get a little bit of separation uh, you know within basically a few meters or so and next thing you know you're on a, on another protected separated or elevated cycle path so but we've got some pretty yeah. major we went from Vondel Park being very very relaxed to this and you're navigating um, thank you very much for doing that <laughs> so I love this particular uh, uh, route here. Uh, as you'll you'll see here, there's it gets very very complicated, um, and uh, I think it's it's kind of a cool thing to see from an urban perspective. You got all the cars to the left, but then you've got this separated pathway and lots of complexity. You've got the bikes parked over here. And then you all sit, all of a sudden see a whole bunch of other things happening and, and, you know, paths peeling off in the other direction. What were you thinking when you were like navigating this section of, uh, of Amsterdam? Yeah, definitely a little bit of a higher barrier to entry. 
um, to figure it out early on if you're especially if you're you know maybe somebody who's new to biking but um, if you've grown up with this obviously you probably wouldn't find it as big of a hurdle yeah um, but yeah it, it you know part of the maybe a little bit chaotic feeling is just how much the infrastructure changes from one block to the next as they deal with space constraints and you know public transit and parking for different types of vehicles I think it's very much like, you know, in a newer in a newer Dutch city, you have all the, you know, you have more room to play with, but they're just dealing with centuries old, you know, uh, space constraints. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love how we just kind of turned the corner oh, yeah. and we ended up in this street. Yeah, it was like, oh, wow. And, and so again, you know, it, you, oh, look at this. Yeah, it was the, the day after Halloween. So there was some uh, uh, decorations still there. And so this to me was one of the is the crown, one of the diamonds in the rough, one of the crown jewels that exist in Amsterdam and many of the cities. It's just some of these incredibly quiet side streets, residential side streets yeah. uh, that you just kind of turn the corner and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I'm not next to that fast moving traffic anymore yeah and i'm on that so one of those and just a cool example of the messy this you know somewhat messiness that's tolerated Mm -hmm. on streets there right because i think that was maybe one way um car traffic but two-way bike traffic and Mm -hmm. it's sort of a little bit more left up to to all users to navigate how that works yeah yeah, whereas we solve that problem by just adding more you know more width and yeah. um yeah so yeah and we're actually approaching the heineken uh, brewery area here um i'm not sure if you recognize that when we were there <laughs> uh once you pointed it out i did yeah 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 got it <laughs> john, had, kinda... john had beer on the brain all morning all morning yeah well and it was it wasn't there. long because we we did you know settle in to a nice cafe and had a nice beer so and again, another neat little, I, I, I want to say it's, it, it's just a, another type of application to this. You can see the, the tram off to the side. We just passed a mm-hmm. transit stop there. And, but you also see just, you know, the intensity of activities in all of the, the buildings surrounding there. And yeah, they still have to get deliveries and, you know, Hopefully they're not blocking the the bike lane or the sidewalk, um, and that's probably one area that could be improved within the city is is logistics. Maybe cycle logistics is the key. A little bit more of the oversized cargo bikes. And um, this is our final stretch. We're actually this is the final little street to get us to our restaurant. And uh, and what a, gr- a great neighborhood. The Depeep neighborhood is just such a yeah. It's such a fun little little space to uh, uh, to kind of hang out in, and and uh, a great place for lunch. <laughs> yeah, well, look how much they pack in this like pretty narrow r- right of way here. Yeah, yeah. And so this this little square area here, uh, we'll see some images, some still photography images in just a moment. But uh, yeah. talk a little bit about what this was like, uh, and and what were some of your you know, memories of this particular area. Oh, this plaza was awesome. It's uh, obviously just really comfortable place to be. Maybe they could have done without a, you know, maybe they could have closed this off to car through travel, but uh, it also didn't really affect how nice it was to sit outside, you know? We were right along where the cars went by and it's not like it really made a big difference. Yeah, and in fact, that last image was just that. You know, we were relaxing uh, because we did grab a table right there on the plaza and just kind of sit there and and had a leisurely lunch and a beer and and, uh, relaxed until Jason could uh, make, you know, connect with us. And then we took off for the afternoon uh, for a ride. But yeah, I mean, just to your point, you know, it's like, it seemed like, why wasn't it just car free? But at the same time, you know, it, it was it was OK. It wasn't amazing because, you know, motor vehicles were there, whether it was a loud scooter that would occasionally go by or uh, you can kind of see in the background of some of those shots. There were some delivery vehicles there. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the end of our morning video. Uh, was that fun to be able to, to walk down memory lane with that? <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a delight. Yeah, I hope the people watching had as much fun as I did rel reliving it. Like, yeah, that was charming. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Jordan. I, I really appreciate this. And, and thank you so much to everybody watching this. Again, the next video is going to be our afternoon ride uh, with Jason Slaughter. And uh, once I get that all, all edited, we'll, uh, we'll let you know when that is going to be premiering. And uh, gosh, you know, again, thank you all so very much. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. See ya. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. <laughs>